What's going on guys? Tropical Fish Guy here. Today I got something cool to show you. Real cool. I mean like coolly cool. Like is it's like uh so cool. It's a miniature eel. No, not really. It's a coolly loach, but it looks like a eel and it looks so cool. Let me show you this really unique and interesting oddball fish that's really sought after that you know because it does look like a little miniature eel scooting around your aquarium there's many varieties some with alternating black patches running running across its back with a leopard pattern that's why another common name for this fish is a leopard loach uh, the coolie loach comes from southeast asia and was once used as a food source in indonesia okay so southeast asia indonesia it's a fish you want to see every time you come to your aquarium. It's a great cleanup crew member. It just goes around and scavenges little bitty pieces of food into the gravel and stuff. It doesn't produce much waste, so you can put a whole bunch of them together. It's an awesome, awesome community fish. It doesn't bother anybody, making a very good candidate for a community fish tank. Like I said before, it is very high in demand. The average lifespan of the coolie loach is about 10 years. So if well taken care of, then you can enjoy them for a very, very long time. Uh, in the wild, they get about five inches. Uh, in captivity, around three or four inches. So they don't need a lot of room in the aquarium. One thing to note, though, is they are very susceptible to water quality and temperature fluctuations. So it's important to keep a stable environment. Since they are pretty much a smooth-skinned fish, they are more sensitive to medications and other chemicals than other fish with scales, okay? One common issue is they are susceptible to ick since they don't have the scales to protect them. When ick hits, they're usually the first one to come down with it and it can be fatal, so be careful. The key, the key, the key to keeping this fish healthy is stable water quality, right? Ammonia, nitrites, pH, that kind of thing. Good, varied diet and a good environment. They're easy to feed. They're omnivores, so they'll eat pretty much anything as they scavenge down the bottom of the tank. They require to be fed food that will reach the bottom of the tank since they don't normally move up to the water column. Although they are omnivores, they really enjoy foods that are rich in protein. They, of course, love live foods as well as freeze-dried foods and frozen foods as well. Also, what I feed mine to is just regular old pellets. They love to eat the pellets. So every day I feed them pellets. Every few days or so I feed them some frozen blood worms, some brine shrimp, some tubifex worms, just some variety like, uh, you know, because I don't like eating the same thing every day. You don't like eating the same thing every day. They don't like eating the same thing every day. So giving them a balanced diet, you know, balance is necessity. The good thing about these guys is you can feed them a little bit several times a day, just like most fish, but you can get away with these guys because they, they really like to eat but just a little bit uh, throughout the day. But, you know, if you're not there throughout the day, right, I feed mine, I'm busy and stuff too, so I feed mine once a day, they're doing just great. But balance is a necessity. In nature, they live in slow flowing rivers uh, and they like warmer temperatures around 75 to 85 degrees. Coolie loaches like more acidic water with a pH around five and a half to seven. But the key, if you have, you know, a range higher or a little bit lower it's okay the key is not to chase the water parameters because they like to be stable just whatever you got if it's kind of in the range just keep it like that and they you know because like I said previously they do they are susceptible to fluctuations so the key is really balance right they are social fish with each other and they like to be in groups they're not big so they don't need a big tank I'd say at a had like three or four in a 10 gallon tank before if you put more than that in the you know they they will require bigger tanks bigger is always better and if you keep more than say three or four in a 10 gallon you probably want to move up if you have like six or eight or ten maybe 15 20 gallons you know something like that at least but but like i said bigger is always better and one thing to keep in mind is they like to squeeze through small cracks and crevices they like to hide a lot so it's important that intake valves, like if you have a power filter or a hang hang on back filter, you want to keep the you want to keep a foam filter 
intake filter or some kind of mesh to where they don't get sucked up, right? Uh, you don't want that. Although they're almost exclusively bottom dwellers, they do sometimes have a tendency to jump out of the tank, so a lid should be on the fish tank. Um, I recommend having a lid. You could probably maybe get away without a lid if you don't have a lid, but you might be missing, you know, might be missing a few. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't happen often to me, but it does happen. For the bottom of the tank, they do prefer sand or smooth, small gravel, so they don't injure their little barbels, which is the little things that pop out of their mouths when they go hunting for food and stuff like that. They need a lot of hiding places, so rock piles, wood, caves, and plants like java fern is uh, what they would love. Live plants is a plus and can make a big difference in their health. Really can. They love live plants. Coolie loaches like to hide, so you may not see them a lot, but mostly when it's feeding time, they do come out and scavenge for food, especially if you have a bunch of them. They feel more comfortable in groups. Uh, social group. Uh, that's why I said earlier they're kind of social. They're not social with other fish. They're social with other coolie loaches. Coolie loaches like to hide, so you may not see them a lot, but mostly when it's feeding time. Mostly during the day, they like to hide. They burrow through the gravel or sand looking for food. They are really calm and peaceful fish and get along with most other community fish such as guppies, mollies, platies, most tetras, small grommies, as well as other peaceful fish that swim in the middle or top of the water. But they can coexist with other chilled, cool bottom dwellers such as quarry cats and cherry shrimp. They will be happy as long as they don't get harassed by other fish. So it is important to avoid predators like cichlids, tiger barbs, betas, arowanas, and other big aggressive fish um, or small aggressive fish, right? Okay, so wrap it up. Coolie loaches make a fine addition to most community fish tanks. Uh, they're easy to feed. They live a very long time with proper care. They're wonderful to have. I would highly recommend you guys get one. They're not expensive at all. Like, I don't know, what did I pay? Like four or five bucks each or something like that. Depending on the area, I'm in Dallas. So in Dallas, I think they're like four or five bucks. But uh, definitely a wonderful fish to have. And let me show you guys some of this food that I feed them. Sinking veggie rounds. Okay, they love that. They go crazy. Tetracolor granules, bug bites. Bottom feeder formula, even the rapashi, they love that. So, I mean, like I said, they eat pretty much anything. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below to all these foods. They'll eat other foods too, you know, like I said. If you got any questions about coolie loaches or if you have something to add about coolie loaches, I really love these things, leave a comment below. Thanks a lot for watching, really appreciate it. And check out uh, my merch at fishytees.net. If you like this shirt, go ahead and get you one. I love my betta fish. Uh, if you love betta fish, get you that. Go to fishytees.net to check out the other fish that you love as well, the other shirts. And I may have them on the shirts. Also, check out my Instagram at the Tropical Fish Guide. I put some cool little pictures of all the different types of fish. A little, you know, the one minute video stuff that they limit you at, that they limit you to. So I think you'll really enjoy that. And thanks a lot for watching. Really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. I don't tell you enough. Like this video. Leave me a comment of what your favorite oddball, weird looking fish is. Uh, this is definitely one of my favorite. Like this video. Give me a comment. Subscribe. Hit that bell notification as usual. Do your thing. And as always, Happy fish keeping. Peace.